The first stage of aerobic respiration is glycolysis, uh, and it happens in the cytoplasm first. And as the name implies, glyco referring to glucose or glycogen, lysis meaning breakdown, so it literally means the breakdown of glucose. So therefore, we're going to start off with glucose, a glucose molecule. So as glucose, as you know, is C6H12O6, it means it has six carbon, it's a six carbon molecule, so I'm just going to draw six circles to represent that. In the first step of glycolysis, glucose uh, gets two phosphate groups donated from two ATPs to become hexose bisphosphate. And in this process, as you can see, the two ATP becomes ADP, so triphosphate becoming diphosphate, and the two phosphate groups have been transferred onto it. And as the name implies, hex meaning six, OSEOs meaning sugar, so hexose, bisphosphate, B-I-S, -B bis, referring to two. Now sometimes you would see bi phosphate for some other molecules. Just keep in mind that this is a bisphosphate uh, and just remember that. And in the second stage, hexobisphosphate splits up uh, into two, which is uh, if you cut them down right down the middle, it becomes a triose phosphate. Then what happens is um, a phosphate group from the, uh, from the cytoplasm is added onto the triose phosphate and because you're adding a phosphate group it becomes triose bisphosphate. Uh, what's really important in this stage is to remember that the phosphate group doesn't come from the ATP. It just, it's just a random inorganic phosphate group in the cytoplasm that just gets attached uh, because often people will get those confused. In the OCR spec, you do not need to know the term, the word uh, triose bisphosphate, but this stage is very quickly illustrated in the textbook. So it's important to keep in mind uh, that this does occur, uh, despite not needing to know the name in detail. Now in the final stage of glycolysis, um, triose bisphosphate is converted into pyruvate. We will look at the diagram to figure out what, uh, what goes on in between. As you can see in pyruvate, it's missing two phosphate groups. And the reason for that is because 2-ADP comes along to collect those two phosphate groups to make ATP, which is kind of the reason why we want to do um, the whole respiration to begin with. And the same thing happens here. Bear in mind that there are two phosphate groups here, therefore we need 2-ADP uh, and they each collect one. After that, uh, what we also need is to rearrange the molecules a little bit so that we make pyruvate. And here comes uh, a coenzyme which is, uh, which is called NAD. And what it does, it comes along and it actually steals a hydrogen atom from triose bisphosphate and, becomes, and, and NAD itself becomes reduced. So in conclusion, glycolysis, in the beginning after you've eaten some uh, chocolate, you digested it and you've got glucose left. And the glucose is absorbed into the cell in the cytoplasm, it's, uh, made, it's converted into hexobisphosphate with the help of two ATP donating, donating their phosphate groups. Uh, then hexobisphosphate is broken down into two triose phosphate. Then a phosphate, inorganic phosphate group comes along and is added to each of those molecules to become triose bisphosphate. Triose bisphosphate is extremely unstable, so almost immediately it will undergo uh, these reactions here. So the 2-ADP comes along, steals those two phosphate groups to become 2-ATP, and NAD comes along and steals a hydrogen atom to become reduced NAD, and finally we get two pyruvate molecules, which are then transported into mitochondria for aerobic respiration. We need to consider some of the reactions here in particular. From photosynthesis, you probably have uh, remembered there is something called photophosphorylation, where we use light to uh, phosphorylate ADP to make ATP. We also have something called oxidative phosphorylation, which is the final stage, where we use oxygen uh, to, uh, to make ATP. Whereas here, this particular reaction, we didn't need any oxygen or light to do that. And uh, interestingly for the other two, photo and oxidative phosphorylation, you need the electron transport chain, the ATP synthase, the enzyme, to make ATP. However, in this case, ADP merely just took the phosphate group off from triosbis phosphate to make ATP. It did not require the ATP synthase or the um, electron transport chain to do so. And therefore we call this particular reaction here, 
substrate level phosphorylation. You will see that happening again uh, in the next stage as well. Now it's important to consider for e from each of these stages uh, what th are the products formed and what happens to these products. So we'll do a little quick summary here. Uh, as you can see, first of all, we do get two pyruvate molecules. And these two pyruvate molecules uh, then goes on to uh, enter the mitochondria to continue on with the cycle. It's just an intermediate in that sense. We also made uh, some ATP. It's important to keep in mind that we yes, we made four ATP here, but we used up two in the beginning. So in that sense, we have a net gain of two ATP. As to their fate, well, the whole point of doing respiration is to make ATP. So it's just one of the many, one of the products that you want to get ultimately. The next thing that we need to consider will be the reduced NAD, and that is very important because it is the one that will enter the final stage to oxidative phosphorylation. Without reduced NAD being made, you can only make maximum two here. And it's these ones that actually go on to make lots and lots of it. Each reduced NAD can make three ATP molecules, and that is why it is important that we try to make lots and lots of it. And there you go, this is the process of glycolysis. We will continue on in the next video on Link and Krebs cycle.